Yo, what's going on? What's up, boys? Your boy's back doing another one of these videos. So, as you might have noticed, a bit of a set change again. You know, I've got a bit of a bit of a wall back here. Got some guitars over there. Got all the God Kendrick Lamar on the wall. Just uh, sending out a good message. You know, be humble. Um, he's watching over me as I uh, go about my music producing business. So today we're going to be looking at some heavy drum and bass. This is a really popular style of music where I'm from in New Zealand. Gets people going, gets people raving. So I thought now's a good time to try and uh, throw down some drum and bass. So I guess let's throw down some drums and throw down some bass and see what we come up with. Alright, so first things first, we need to set our tempo to a very quick 175, you can go with 174, you can go with 172, 73, you know, just, you know, the 174, 175, that's the sweet spot, that's where we like to be. So the first thing we're going to try and do is try and create a, a sort of dark, sort of spooky, sort of sounding build up. So the first thing I've laid down here is just an atmospheric sample. So what I've paired this with is this little brass rise sound. Now when you put those two together and I'm going to fade this atmospheric sample in, we get a really cool sort of vibe already. So now basically I'm just going to try and chuck some more elements on top of this to make it a bit more full and a bit more interesting. I've gone and thrown on a bass. And you can hear that's just a saw bass with a low pass filter on it. So that's just playing on the D sharp and I think I'm just going to keep it playing one note. And another thing I added is this little pluck and I wanted this pluck to sort of just sit in the background. So I've just put a wet reverb on it. You can see the dry is pulled basically all the way down. And I just want sort of a bit more atmosphere, a bit more things happening on in the soundscape. So another thing I'm going to add is just a little hi-hat hit. If you listen to this genre again, you're probably going to hear this in a lot of songs. They tend to just start the intro with just like a little percussive element. So obviously that has a bit of reverb on it. It's acting as sort of like a nice little bit of white noise. And I think another thing I'm going to throw in here is this synthy ting. I've made this little pattern to hit on thirds. So this is playing every two-thirds I think so anyway it's just a simple little pattern on a simple little preset and what I'm gonna do to start off is just have a low pass filter on it just so the highs are really closed off at the start and then I think we're gonna open them up more as we go towards the build up I decided I wanted to add one more thing and this is another common thing you hear in this genre it's almost like a robot AI sort of voice just saying something you know spooky voice lady basically once you let them in fear will literally kill you from the inside you stop trying so hard and you surrender to the knowing that you don't know anything should I let them own me with chemicals please the system is so perpetual. So, um, yeah, she's spitting, spitting some kind of, uh, wisdom. So thank you, lady, for, uh, saying such, uh, inspiring words. As we move into transitioning to the build-up, I've just put a couple of risers and we have our brass moving in. So I've thrown together a pretty simple build up section. I guess the main part of this is the drums. So what I'm going to do is start off with the drum and bass beat that I'm going to go and use in the drop and it's sort of going to morph from just the normal drum and bass beat into a build up drum. So I'm going to start with a low pass filter on them and just open them up as we get towards the, the build up and that's going to build a bit of tension. Of 
course we're throwing down some fat impacts and risers to really build that tension as we move towards the drop. And finally we're gonna end with our creepy AI lady. She's just gonna say some some wisdom again, you know. So what do you got to say, lady? Um I wanna hear it. I wanna hear it before we drop the bass. Please. Uh tell us. Kill you from the inside. Alright, so I'm going to start off with arguably the most important part, and that is the drum beat. The most distinctive part to a drum and bass song is one part of the equation, it's the drums. So the drum and bass genre has this really distinctive boom chick, boom chick type beat. And then we can add a hi-hat in there. So a few other things I added was a bit more top end, so I, I added in this ride as well. And also I added a faster hi-hat just for another layer. So the idea for my bass line was basically to have a saw bass pattern playing some kind of tune and then a real heavy sort of like screamer, almost like tear out bass in between. So I came up with this pattern. It's basically like a quick little riff and then a gap where I'll fill it with the screamer. And then at the end of that, we'll just play another little tune and it'll basically go like that. So I'll play a little bit of the pattern here and in the gaps, just imagine like a screamer. So this saw bass sound, it sounds really full and really thick, but essentially it's just an easy, easy to do sort of sound. You basically just need some heavy, filthy, saw sounds and you can just layer them up. So I put those all together as a layer and then just ran them through this beefy mother freaking effects chain. You can see there's three OTTs on there, there's some distortion, some sausage fattener, just EQing along the way to just remove a bit of bad frequencies. The OTTs, they're doing the heavy lifting. If we turn those off. So the second very important part of this bass for the drummer bass track is the screamer that I mentioned. So this bass sound is, it's exactly what it says. It's an aggressive screamer. And it's got this really fun little knob down here. It is called sick mode. Basically, we just gotta twist this and it gets sick. So you can see there, every time I move that knob, it changes the sound just a little bit, and that's gonna be really useful for these little gaps. So what I've done in the gaps with the screamer is literally just play one note, the D sharp note. But the cool little trick I'm using is just to change the sound slightly with that sick mode knob, and also use a little bit of pitch bend in there. So for example, the first gap sound sounds like this. The second sounds like this. Now you can see that this automation here is the sick mode and that's changed location. What I've also added is this LFO tool playing a 1 8th triplet. That's a volume LFO, so that's just gonna create a little bit of pulsing on there. And on number four, I had just added some phaser. So for the post-processing of the screamer bass, look at that three OTTs again, basically just chucking those effects on there and beefing that boy up. So now let's play the basses together and we'll add our sub in there and listen to what the bass is bringing as a, as a full element to this drum and bass track.
So when we get to the middle of the drop, I just added this little mid drop fill. Essentially, it's just changing the drum beat up a little, adding some endless smile, chucking in a riser and upping the reverb on the bass. And yeah, that just acts as a sort of transition. So as we go into the second half of the drop, basically I, I wanted to do something different. I didn't just want to re-loop the first bass. Essentially all I've done is cut up this first bass pattern. I've just added more screamers in there. So that's essentially it. I hope you guys found this helpful hope you guys go and make some drum and bass hope you enjoyed the video enjoy the final result see you in the next one boys once you let them in fear will literally kill you from the inside you stop trying so hard, and you surrender to the knowing that you don't know anything. Should I let them own me with chemicals? Please. The system is so perpetual. Fear will literally kill you from the inside. Kill you from the inside. you from the inside.